We are live on the internet and the world wants to hear from you. <laughs> How did you end, like, so I know Matt. Matt Mullenweg in, is uh, one of the original coders. He's also good friends with Tim Ferriss, who we were just visiting with. Yeah. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about your story getting involved in WordPress and how you're sitting right here on this couch today? Sure, yeah. I was actually introduced to the world of WordPress by Om Malik, the uh, famous blogger, Giga Om. Um, he did a story on my previous company. It was called Oppost, and we had um, sold it to Yahoo. I was a webmail company. And he did a story about our acquisition. And during it, as we were talking, he said, you know, you seem like somebody who's like going to go off and do another startup. And I just discovered this open source project, WordPress. I switched my blog to it. And the, the founder of WordPress, Matt, this 19-year-old kid at the time, is just really interesting. And you should meet him. So he introduced us. And Matt, happened, he's from Texas, but he was out here uh, interviewing for a job at CNET, I think, and we met. Um, and then just kind of stayed in, and I loved the product. I loved him, the way he was thinking about it. Really as a platform, very long-term vision. He wanted this to be around for decades. <clears throat> really was my introduction into open source. Um, yeah. I, mean, I knew what open source was, but really sure. learning about it. And then just kind of, started getting to know each other. And then a couple of years later, he, Matt said, you know, I'd like to start a company behind WordPress. And, you know, I was like 20 or 21 at the time. And he said, but I don't, so not, I don't so know. At 19, he made the, made the platform. At 21, he's doing yeah, better. Super talented guy. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, I, but I don't know how to run a business. And I'd love for you to be CEO. So I joined him. And we built the company together, really. I'm the CEO. He's the president and founder of the company. and. Um, it's been great. Well, you guys are peas in a pod because what you're building, what you have built to date has been completely spectacular. As I said earlier, I'm a user. So uh, this is full, full disclosure. We didn't meet before. <laughs> I, was, I was just converted at the door. No, yeah. no, I've been using this thing uh, for, for several years. And, you know, I've, I've uh, as a photographer, um, I've been lucky enough to launch products like the first camera, the first actually HD DSLR camera that allowed you to um, get a really cinematic movie lo uh, look was uh, that the first camera to do that was the D90. Mm -hmm. and I launched that for Nikon many, many years ago now. Um, but on that day, it was not only was it a, a new camera that was announced and camera people are freaks, but it was a completely new technology that allowed a camera that its predecessor was $150,000 and now this was a thousand. So mm -hmm. it was a worldwide phenomenon. My, my, uh, blog was on WordPress, and it completely survived mm -hmm. the onslaught of traffic, which was, I mean, it was like millions of uh, visitors. And uh, I had been on a different platform before then that I will not mention, <laughs> and uh, it didn't survive. So mm -hmm. I owe you a huge debt of gratitude for that. That's um, a, I love hearing those kinds of stories because that's what well, our mission is to democratize publishing and let anybody become huge like that and really put the tools in the hands of everyone it's now millions of people using it and have it be possible that you have a huge audience and it just works like you don't have to worry about writing that software or maintaining it or what you know the servers or any of that and it's led to some unbelievable sites and blogs that people have built and so you just mentioned a little bit about the the user base uh, you said millions. I, th I think it's a lot more than just millions. So <laughs> can you clarify that just so that people out there in the, in the internet world and the in-studio audience, they know just how meaty what it is that you guys have built? Yeah, so there's a, a few ways to look at it. The, the main one we look at is just how many sites. You look at the entire internet, all the websites on the internet, how many of them use WordPress? And that number's been climbing and climbing over the years, and right now it's about 18%. Okay. all the websites in the world. Can we just have a moment of silence <laughs> for that? Can we pause for just a second? 18% of all of the websites yeah. in the so, whole world on their platform. Yeah. So that's a... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> so uh, so that's, an, that's an exciting number. And then... It makes me feel so special. <laughs> that my, oh, wait a minute. I'm but one you were a pioneer. <laughs> you were there early. Um, and what's great about it, too, is that's by, by far the biggest. Our next competitors at 4%. So we, uh, we're doing really well on that. And then if you look at just how many sites is that, it's, 
it kind of depends how you count, like what's sure. an active site, what, you know, what's a network, what's a site, but it's somewhere you know, around 50, 60 million sites. So that's the people who use WordPress. And then those sites attract their own audiences. And that's virtually kind of everybody on the internet at this point. Um, probably, even if you don't know what WordPress is, just in your daily browsing of the internet, you're, you're using touching it. multiple WordPress sites. If you do a search on Google, those 10 results you know, on the home page, three or four of those are powered sites powered by WordPress. So it's kind of everywhere, but under the hood, unless you're a writer or publisher or photographer yourself using it. Wow. So let's just open the door for just a second to the folks that are interested in open source. Mm -hmm. So you, like, as a CEO of an open source platform, how is, how is your thinking different than if you're a CEO of a, of a closed platform? It's, uh, it's different, and it's still evolving, I would say. Yeah. That's actually when Matt first talked about starting a company, his first question was to me, do you think you could build a company that turns into a great company, but also make sure that the open source project is great and grows and remains strong. How yeah. do you do that? And at the time, eight years ago, the kind of role models we had to look at weren't very good because you either had pure open source projects that were huge, like a Mozilla or an Apache, that, you know, they were, they're great, they're very popular, lots mm -hmm. of people use them, but they're not businesses. Like they, they're very limited in how they commercialize because right. it's all about open source. And then you had companies that were built on open source, like a Red Hat or a MySQL, that were commercially successful, but they weren't really, they were either totally separate from the open source piece right. or they kind of suffocated the open source piece after a while. Like the company becomes more and more popular and the people contributing to the open source project go, wait a second, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> this, is no, this is not about contributing anymore, it's just right. about helping this company. So what we did is we said, let's build two separate entities that really support each other. So we have WordPress.org, uh -huh. that's actually part of, there's like a WordPress foundation, and then there's WordPress.org where the open source lives in the open source community, yeah. and that's not owned by the company. So I don't have any control over that. That's an open source led community. And you have WordPress.com where the commercial service lives. That's where you can start a blog and buy our upgrades and we run the software for you. But if you just want to grab the software and run it yourself, you can do that anytime for free. So that's how we solved it. And whenever we, whenever we add a feature to WordPress.com, we give it away as open source. And then conversely, we can take the thousands of contributions that are made to the open source project and bring those into WordPress.com. So it's kind of a give and take. And let's say over the years as a company, we've probably contributed you know, 10, $20 million worth of work to the open source project. So we're a huge contributor to it, but it makes great sense because it's the well, platform that our company is built on. So we want it to be successful. And another thing that's, so that's different. It's just oh, a yeah. different way to think about. So when I make decisions, it's much more about, okay, which bucket does it fit into? Is it commercial? Does the company engage on it? Or does it fit in the other bucket? And we sort of give it away. And then also you think, I think a lot more about the entire sort of WordPress ecosystem. We're WordPress.com. We're sort of the biggest company in that space, but there's now tens of thousands of WordPress businesses anywhere from other pretty substantial startups to one or two person shops who yeah. just build websites for people and make a living on WordPress. And so I think about that whole ecosystem and I think about what, what we're doing as a company, how is it gonna affect everybody else? And are there things that we should stay away from? Right. Like a typical company would just gobble up everything <laughs> that makes money, right? Like in our case, for example, we do, we do not build websites for people. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want to be on WordPress, but I, I, can you build a site for me? Say, no, Here's, here are a thousand right. companies and consultants and designers who will do that for you. And we send that business to them and we don't take a cut. We just refer business and we, we leave that on the table, if you will. And I think as a typical commercial company, we'd go, whoa, wait a second. That's, that that's sounds money. lucrative. <laughs> yeah. We're, you know, you, you just go after the money. Or another one is the WordCamps, which are WordPress user conferences that we started the first one and then kind of open sourced. And anybody in the WordPress community can do a WordCamp. 
you just sort of follow certain rules. You get your local WordPress community together. We promote it. And it's, it's sort of open to everyone. And it's not supposed to be commercial. You, have, you can have sponsors, but it's not about making money. And same thing, we could have turned that into a, an event business and have the big 3,000, 5,000 person big conference every year in San Francisco and charge people. Instead, we have five or 10,000 people going to work camps, but all over the world, small events. You know, some, most of them are free. Some of them are like 20 bucks to get in. Um, so same so thing, like just yeah. not optimized for commercial impact, but optimized for the community to really grow and bring in, bring in people. Now, is that an ethos? I'm fascinated by this. Is that an ethos? So to be able to say like, oh, we're not charging for this, we're not charging for that. Is that an ethos? That, that Matt brought to the company originally that you were made, that you guys have now sort of um, gelled around you want to maintain that because you believe in the ability for that to sustain and grow and, and help the world? Well, yeah, absolutely. And it's really the taking the open source concept, which is it's totally non-commercial, mm -hmm. and everybody's here because they want to share and contribute, which, by the way, is a much better motivator than the paycheck, turns mm -hmm. out, um, and bringing those ideas into commercial company and finding out, okay, what are the things where we feel okay about charging? And it's actually a good idea. People coming to us and they're right. asking, like, can I pay you to run my site? Like, you know, like CNN uses WordPress, New York Times uses WordPress, and, you know, Major League Baseball uses WordPress. I've, I've they not heard wanna, of any of those. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> they, I'm sure there's some big ones. They somewhere. need a company to work with, right? To, and that's what we do. Like the open source community isn't going to do that. Right. Um, so that's totally fine. And so there's kind of, so what I learn as a business person is just how do you sort of bounce, how do you fit into that ethos? Like, and what are things? It's sort of like, okay, is this, this going to annoy the, the community, right? It's yeah. sort of your, I guess, uh, it's like your conscience, right? Yeah. It's like, it's nice. And just try and, conscience. and of course, when we started the company, a bunch of people were like suspicious, like, oh, here they go. They're going to make a bunch of money. It's going to get all commercial. Like, I'm leaving. And it took, probably took like three or four years of years. just wow. acting, like being a good actor. And every time we would launch something, people would go, see, they're going to, you know, here it comes. And then it was okay. And we, we sort of earned the trust now where, for the last few years, I haven't heard anybody sort of be nervous that we're going to over-commercialize or overstep those bounds. But it's a balance that you kind of, of have to learn over the years. And it's been super interesting and helpful. I think it makes for a better company. It does. It does. Um, it's if you're just joining, I'm Chase Jarvis, co-founder of Creative Live, and I'm sitting with Tony Snyder, the CEO of Automatic, which is the, uh, the mothership, if you will, for WordPress.com. WordPress.org, separate but equal. Or, uh, and if um, if I could say anything to you, and I, I only had I was passing you in the hall, it would be thank you, because uh, you've made so many how many 60, 50, 60 million websites possible. Um, you know, when you're just describing this sort of the, that you have this um, the New York Times and all those things that are paying for like that's where the money comes from, right? Mm -hmm. And so, th do you, do you think of yourselves as freemium? Like there's a free yeah. service and a pay service. You know, that's what we're trying to do here at Creative Live mm -hmm. is anyone in the world can watch for free. And you only need to purchase the course if you want to own a copy of it mm -hmm. and be able to time shift it and save it and watch it over and over and over again. And, you know, when we thought about Creative Live a couple years ago when we started this, the business model was uh, the idea of my co-founder, Craig Swanson. And it just it resonated with me because what I'd always done is given away information and when we started thinking about that in terms of making a company that can truly change education, we look in the marketplace and there are companies that are the ones that, that, that often win. It's like, you know, you got Spotify, you got LinkedIn, Pandora, Dropbox, all of those, the friction to participate is low or zero. Mm -hmm. And and then there's an opportunity to make money. And it just so happens, like, we're not trying to print money in this place. We're trying to make a sustainable business that can create an ecosystem that the world thrives in. And it sounds mm -hmm. very similar to what you guys are doing. And, and yeah. I'm sure we borrowed a lot of it from you. But Well, no, I when I first learned about your model, I thought this is one of those great models that just kind of strike the right balance. Like, I feel like sometimes, you know, you go to a website and it's kind of all free or it's usually ad-supported, so it's not really free, but 
you kind of feel like, wow, I'd almost like want to pay for this, not to have <laughs> stupid ads or whatever. Um, or a lot of times, especially more traditional software companies, it's the other extreme where like they're just mil they're just trying to get you to pay. Like like the worst ones are these like enterprise software companies where they won't even tell you what it costs. Like you have to call somebody, and then as soon as they have you, like <laughs> it's like this endless like whoa, you know, to get a trial you have to do this, and you have to. It's just this process that's all designed to maximize how much money they're going to get out of you. And open source is a great model where you can say, hey, it's free, take it, try it. Don't even call me until you're ready to actually, if you want it, like right. we're not hiding anything. Um, you want us to run it? Great, pay us money. You want to run it yourself? Great, you take it. You want it started with us and then take it in-house? That's totally fine. It just, it feels like the right balance. So same with you guys. It's like, right. I heard about that model, I'm like, wow, oh, that seems fair. And that's what, I like models and I think freemium models are like this where Customers go, no, that feels right. You know, I'm getting, I'm not getting sort of held, you know, up to like extract the maximum amount of money out of me, but I get it. This is a business. This seems right. I'm getting something for free. I'm getting sort of enough to try it or to do like, a, like in the case of blogs, you can publish for free, but if you want to, instead of being tony.wordpress.com, if you want to be tonysblog.com, you have to have your own URL, that's something you pay for. Or yeah. You want like a custom design for your blog that looks totally unique to you and that, you know, that you pay for that. The free ones are sort of ones that everybody can use. So things like that, I just feel, feel good to me. And there's, there's a lot of interesting freemium companies out there now. Yeah. And it's, actually, there isn't a big one. There isn't like, a, you know, when you think like ads, you think Google is like the biggest ad company. Right. Or you think e-commerce, it's Amazon. When you think freemium, there isn't like a massive freemium company yet, but uh, you know you have companies like us, you have companies like SurveyMonkey mm -hmm. or Evernote, who are, you know, these are now companies who are doing fifty, hundred million plus in revenue yeah. every year a billion dollar off company. of this freemium model. Yeah. And the other thing I love about freemium is it's kind of an evolution of the model where you get like something for free for thirty days and then you have to buy it, but instead here it's free forever. Like you're never gonna, it's never taken away from you. So the free will always stay free, and then you can upgrade if you want. So um, it's what I love about that as a business is instead of cutting off your customer at 30 days and saying you have to, you know buy it now or you're out, you should say no, stick around forever, forever. And right. eventually you might buy something. We have people who've used WordPress.com for four years and then they finally buy something, and great, you know, you just and. So every month, your sort of base grows of potential customers, and it doesn't go away. Like you're not forcing them out. So I think that's, I think it's really a, a model that we'll see a lot more of in the future. Well, I'm a huge fan. I have a huge debt of gratitude for what you guys have built. Thank you. Um, I recommend it. I can't even tell you how many times I recommend. It. I have a, a decent sized social following, and people are always asking me what it's like to work on it, and uh, it's so universal. Like the, all the, the dashboard, all that stuff is great. And I don't mean to just like blow smoke here, but <laughs> it's served me well for years and years and years and years. Um, I don't know if there's any questions in the audience. We're super short on time. Um, I, I think if that's the case, I need to wrap us up and move us on. But I am right. so, so grateful that you stopped by here in the backstage. Your, your main stage presentation was amazing. And um, I know it's... it's it's in my queue because I couldn't I couldn't be standing there with you on stage, so I'm gonna go watch it. Right. Thanks so much. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. And again, I'm oh, go ahead and let's start. Stop, 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 stop. Thank you.